Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a great Friday. Um, I hope it's, it's been a good day for you. Uh, we've been we've been having a good day and a half or two days. Um, as I shared yesterday, we we found our dog. We were looking at dates. It was actually six weeks and one day since Cato had gone missing, and uh, and much to uh, well to, to what I thought he was running around. We thought that maybe someone got him, but I just I had a feeling that he. Um, that he was roaming, and that's exactly what he was doing. And so we took him to the vet yesterday, had him checked over, and uh, had him cleaned up and groomed up, and uh, he's home. And so um, y'all be praying for us because we've got to get used to having a dog again. The kids are excited. Um, you know, he's our puppy, so uh, you know sometimes our, our little furry animals are a big important part of our lives. And uh, so y'all pray for him. Uh, he did have worms, so they had to deworm him. He's a little lethargic today. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be fine. The kids wore him out last night, and I know he's he's not used to having to play. He just kind of roamed around and probably slept quite a bit. So, anyway, I hope y'all are having a great day, uh, and I hope you know, you know, you know it's just been a blessed blessed week for you. I want us to continue looking at Jesus's miracles uh, today. Like I said, we're gonna do this again next week. Uh, but today, I want us to look at um, a miracle y'all are all very familiar with. I'm sure most of you are, maybe not, but. Uh, and that is uh, the miracle where the friends bring the paralytic to Jesus and they let him down through the roof. Uh, this is just such an incredible story. Uh, it's a story of some just some deep faith and trust. And uh, I want us to look at this story together today. Um, the, the text that we'll be looking at today is Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Mark chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 1. So I want us to look over this today. And uh, and just work through these these twelve verses uh, this afternoon. Uh, I think this is one of these these stories that will um, it'll encourage us in a lot of ways, and it just helps us to be reminded of just how great our faith is. So let's pray together, and when we're done praying, we will begin looking at our scripture and the story together. Father, we love you and praise you, and God, we thank you for a, just another day, another time that we can come together. Lord, I pray that you'd watch over us now as we study your word. God, touch our hearts, help us to grow. Father, I pray for all that's happening in our community, Lord. I pray for uh, our doctors and nurses always as they continue to fight the virus, but also give care for other things. I pray for our families who have dealt with the virus, our families who have lost loved ones. Uh, Father, just uh, be with them and watch over them, God. And, uh, Lord, I pray right now that you would watch over us. Uh, in the coming days, be with our drive-in service on Sunday. God, I pray that you'd help that to go as, as best as it can. And Father, that we'd glorify you as we do it. Uh, because ultimately our goal is to come together and worship you, Father, to learn more about your word. And so I just pray that you'd be with us. But God, we love you. We praise you. We pray that you'll watch over us now. In Jesus' name, amen. So Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, and it says the following. And, uh, and I'm going to do what I've been doing um, and then that's working through the verses uh, just for the sake of, of our time frame. But it says this in Mark 2, beginning in, in verse 1. It says, And when he came back to Capernaum several days afterwards, it was heard that he was at home. And many were gathered together, so that there was no longer room even near the door. And he was speaking the word to them. So uh, Jesus has come home, and word gets out. And as always, a question to always remember, what happens when Jesus teaches? A crowd forms. A crowd forms, folks. And, uh, and so that's, that's something to always remember as we study the Word. People wanted to come out and hear what he was teaching. And then it tells us in verse 2, at the end, it says, And he was speaking the Word to them. And, and understand, again, through the Old Testament, he's teaching them about himself and the Gospel. Uh, what we would, I guess, term the Gospel. And so remember, as he's teaching them, he's not just teaching them the same things the Pharisees and the other scribes and religious leaders were teaching them. That, that was, you know, they, they would walk away from that. He is teaching them something new. And so that's one of the reasons that the, the religious leaders were getting so angry over time as his ministry matured um, is because of the things he was teaching. And so uh, understand that's what he's doing. Verses 3 and 4 were introduced to the friends and the paralytic. And it says, And they came, bringing him a paralytic, carried by four men. And being unable to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. When they had dug an opening, they let down a pallet in which the paralytic was lying. So here we have these friends are bringing their friend. That's a paralytic. And 
and and folks the crowd was so large they didn't even want to go they i mean they couldn't get to jesus they they, they had no way of, you know and it's interesting to me their determination here because uh folks the question becomes how determined were they and folks it's it's easy to see how determined they were if we just sit there and and consider the fact they were willing to go up on a roof these houses and a lot of the houses here back in this time would have stairs leading up to the roof and they had used that roof for various activities and, and had various uses they were flat and where they could get up and and digging through that roof would not have been an easy thing it was not a matter of it being a hut like you see on you know whenever you think of say, an island somewhere there was, it was it was better engineered than that so to dig through and tear that roof up was something that would have taken time and so uh, folks the, these these friends were determined um, you know it makes me think about today how determined are we for to do something like this for our friends um, we've become such an impatient society I was in Dothan the other day and going to Sam's and of course right now Sam's has got where well, you have to wait they only have so many people that allow in and it didn't take long even though the line was basically the length of the building it only took about 10 minutes to get in but the number of people who came and stood at the end of this line for no more than two to three minutes and then kind of just you know and walked off it was very interesting and it's just as we've been I've been out and about during social distancing the you can you can really get a sense of how impatient we've become as a society and and I, I have to wonder at as times as as Christians, how patient are we with our friends? How determined are we to take the gospel to them, to do whatever it takes to tell them about Jesus? Folks, these these friends of this paralytic, they were willing to do whatever it took to get them, to get this this paralytic, their friend to Jesus. But look what Jesus does in verse five. You see, because Jesus is beginning to claim authority. Not just teaching authority, but he's beginning to claim authority as to who he is because he is God. And so what he does in verse 5, it says, And when Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Why? Why? Why, why, would, why would he do that? And folks, it's, it's clear why he did that. It's he knew who his audience was. Um, that's something that's so important for us as we share the gospel is to know who we're we're talking to not so that we can twist things but we can then know how to get the the point across to them maybe in a better fashion and so he knew who he was talking to of course these these men they didn't bring their friend to jesus to have his sins forgiven in their mind they brought their friend to him so that he could be healed and so jesus does this though because he knows he has scribes and he has religious leaders in the crowd and and he knows that it's yeah, he's he's about to begin to challenge them with his teaching and start to make claims that he can forgive sin. And you understand that the Jewish people believed only God could forgive sin. So in verse six, verse six and seven, it says this. But there were some of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. For who can forgive sins but God alone? Now, and I understand a couple of things about this. They they decided in their hearts that he was committing blasphemy now this was a big deal okay and a couple of reasons first off you're gonna see Jesus respond and it's a big deal it shows us his his his, his omnipotence his how, how powerful obviously he is just like God he knew what they were thinking without them speaking okay so that's the, one of the first reasons it's a big deal but the other reason is we look at the heart in our culture a lot of times is our place for emotion you know I love you so much oh that blesses my heart that kind of stuff. For the Israelites, that's not what the heart represented. Emotion and other things are more of a head issue. A heart issue for them was a big deal. It was, it was a spiritual issue. It, it, it was a, a big deal. Uh, this is the spiritual center of the body was their heart. It determined their beliefs, their values, how they acted. Uh, we would use the term worldview. Now, when we say we believe something and then we put actions to it, it becomes our worldview. That's how they were. That was where they placed their value. So for them to reason in their heart that Jesus was blaspheming, they were, they were making their decisions. They were picking their sides already of, of where their allegiance was going to be. And so they, they did this. Uh, but as you continue on reading, 
verses 8 and 12, we see Jesus, or through 12, we see his awareness of the situation. It says, And immediately Jesus, aware of his spirit, that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, Why are you reasoning about these things in your heart? In other words, the question was, why aren't you listening and thinking? But instead, you're, 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 you're actually reasoning in your hearts about this. See, uh, two different things. It's one thing to think about something. It's another thing to, to reason in your heart for these people. That meant they were picking sides without even hearing. They weren't considering. They weren't giving Jesus an opportunity to teach, to see what was going to happen. They just were immediately, Ugh. And so, you know, for us, we have things a little bit different that we have the word to weigh things against. When we hear someone teach, we don't just have to reason it in our hearts and think about it. We have the Bible that we can pull out and, and begin checking what they're saying against. And, and so he was aware of what was happening and what they were doing. Um, so in verse 9, it says, Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Arise and take up your pallet and walk? So he... he uh, uh, he, he challenges them. And he says, looks at the scribes and he said, what's easier to forgive sin? Could the scribes forgive sins? Of course they could not forgive sins. Only only God himself could. And see, that was the issue is Jesus was making this this connection. He was building that bridge to help them begin to understand that he was, he was God in human form. And so then he says, what's easier? You know, is it easier to heal him? Well, could the scribes heal this man? Well, of course they couldn't. Uh, folks, from a human standpoint, which would be easier? What would be me easier for me to forgive somebody? I could look at someone who had wronged me and, and tell them that I forgive them, that, that it's okay. But if they had a, let's say that I wronged them and they were injured, I could say I'm, I forgive you or, I, um, or I'm sorry. Let's say that they wronged me and in the process of wronging me, they were injured. Maybe someone broke in my house and, and I shot them. Um, and later on, they came and to me, and I forgave them for breaking in my house. But that doesn't mean I could heal them from where I shot them. Um, so, from a human standpoint, forgiveness is, is much easier. Um, and so, Jesus is challenging them on who could do these things. So, look what he says. But in order that you may know, listen to what he says. In order that you may know, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He says to the paralytic, I say to you, rise and take up your pallet and go home. So, so Jesus looked at them knowing that they knew that the forgiveness of sins was something that they could you know, possibly do, that, that healing this paralytic was not possible for them. He, he, he sits there and says, I'm going to show you how, how much authority I have. I'm going to tell this man to, to get up and walk. And he's He's, he's going to do just that. He demonstrates that to everyone there. All those, this crowded home, people outside, everyone that's, being, uh, that's listening to his teaching now are seeing this incredible act and now these incredible claims by Jesus that he has the authority to forgive sin. In verse 12 it says, And he rose immediately and took up his pallet and went out inside of all. And they were amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Folks, by doing these things, this is one of the times in Jesus' miracles where he demonstrated his power to both heal people and his power to forgive sins, his deity to everyone in attendance. There was no, don't go and tell anybody. There was no holding back. There was no doing it quietly, but it was in front of everybody. Folks, he, 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 he demonstrated this to everyone. And folks, the outcome was they glorified the Lord. They glorified God because of it. Folks, Jesus never tried to take the spotlight from the Father. I hope you understand that and notice that as he does his miracles. Never once does he go, no, 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 I did this. As they glorify God, I'm sure he just smiles and is delighted that they're glorifying the Father. And we should be the same way. Folks, our faith should be deep and we should trust the Lord. And we should make sure that we do all we can to bring our friends and families to his throne in prayer, in our actions, the lost community around us to his throne in prayer and in actions. We shouldn't let anything hold us back. And we should be praying for God to help us have faith like these four men did and like this paralytic did.
That's how we need to be, folks. I hope you all have a great Friday. I hope you'll be blessed. Again, remember, drive-in church, 10 a.m. Sunday. Uh, there's some goodie bags up here at the Breezeway for children. It's got some activities and other things for them for Sunday. Uh, so know those are for Sunday during service, so they'll have some things to do. Um, but I hope you all have a great Friday. Remember, if you need anything, get in touch with us. We want to help as best we can. God bless y'all. Y'all have a great Friday afternoon and a great weekend. We'll see you.